Hello everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, June the 16th. Today's topic is an open mic show with what's on your summer bucket list. Your co-moderators are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffat, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us. Our special guests today are Paula Noggle, who will facilitate, and everybody in the room. I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will introduce Paula. Well, hello, everyone. This is such a fun show for us to do, and I'm so glad you're here. And if you weren't able to join live since this is being recorded, we know that you're going to enjoy all of the great sharing today. We love having Paula Noggle share and facilitate this session because there's no one that can do it quite like her. Paula is one of our Classroom 2.0 Live hosts, and she teaches fourth graders ELA and social studies in a public school just outside of New Orleans, Louisiana, that is. She has 40 years of classroom experience, and you, if you know her, you know that she is passionate about technology integration and connecting her students on a global scale. Paula is an avid Twitter user, and I've included her Twitter feed in our live binder today, so be sure to follow her if you're not. And she moderates Fourth Chat and LA Ed Chat, and she's an ambassador for Edmodo and Simple K-12. She's a Den Star and Leadership Council member, and she serves as the Region 1 Director for the Q, which is the Louisiana Computer Using Educators. So we are so excited that Paula is going to take us on this journey today. And we're going to, it's similar to a, a tweet chat, but Paula's going to explain all about how this works. And you all have microphones. So when you're called on to take the mic, and Paula will call on you if you raise your hand, then she'll give you, you already have the mic permission, she'll call your name and you'll know it's your turn to talk. At that time, you'll click on talk, and then you turn talk off when you're finished speaking. So here we go on this fun ride. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. This is Paul from New Orleans, Louisiana. So excited to be the facilitator for our open mic. Of on what's on your summer bucket list. I don't know about you, but I've already been enjoying two weeks of my summer vacation, resting and relaxing, and um, I actually got back from a three-day conference, so I've been doing lots of things already. So the most important thing to remember during this is that you're going to be using the left panel of the Blackboard Collaborate. And there's a little, there are icons under your name, under the participants. And the most important one we're going to be using during the, this is the little hand symbol. And your hand, when you click on that, you'll rate, your name will rise to the top of the list, and you'll be assigned a number, and I'll call on you. And then, of course, after I call on you, the second most important thing to remember is to click on the talk button. And don't worry, we've all messed up. There have been times I've been talking away, and all of a sudden I realized I never clicked on the talk button. So we'll all help you through that. It's real easy. And then once you're done, you can click on the little hand, and your hand goes down, and we're off to the next one. So let's get started. Um, don't forget, we also have prizes, um, possibilities for those of you who are going to participate with us today. It's fun, it's easy, and we hope you'll all take the mic. All right, here we go. The newbie question is, what is an open mic show and how does it work? Well, an open mic show is kind of a way to get all of our participants speaking instead of just our featured speaker and the um, show's co-host. So that we hope that everyone in the audience will participate, take the mic, and we'd love to hear your voice. 
there are so many of you that I recognize on a weekly basis, and I just like to hear a voice that goes with the name, and I think we would all love that. So we are excited to have you part of this show. Okay? So our first bucket list question. What is the first PD book you plan on reading this summer and why? So remember, in order to participate, you're going to come over here to the left panel. You're going to click on the third icon over, which is the raise hand. And when you raise your hand, I'll start calling on you to take the mic. So again, what is your first PD, the first PD book you plan on reading this summer and why? And I'm going to go ahead and raise my hand so that you see I've been assigned number one. And I'll be the first one to share. Good, yay, we got people clicking in. So I am excited. I have a whole stack of books to read this summer. But the first one I'm going to be reading is called Bold School by Weston. I knew I was going to mispronounce his name. Kaminsky. Um, in fact, the conference that I just went to, he was our keynote speaker. And he wrote the book, Bold School. And he has some awesome information um, about how to, what are the best uh, teaching strategies to use in the classroom to get the most bang for your buck. So that's the book I'm going to read. So I'm going to put my hand down. And Peggy, you are next. Woohoo! <laughs> I get excited because I have lots of things that I am very excited about. And today, um, I'm going to actually do a quick screen sharing because I want to share and give you a little something to look at. I want to share the, the new book that Brian Costello has written called The Teacher's Journey. And I hope that this doesn't um, knock too many of you off with the um, bandwidth. But I can't, I, I've already started reading it. I got it as soon as it came out. But I haven't finished it yet. And that's why I put it on my bucket list. I was really intrigued. Brian is an amazing storyteller. And he's, he's taking us on a teacher's journey that starts with teacher preparation. And since that was a large part of my career, um, teaching teachers to teach both at the university and as a principal, I was really happy that he started there. And I'm going to do just a little quick scroll down here to give you an idea about what covered in his book. It's a very interactive book. And here's his table of contents. And he's calling it the hero's journey because he sort of modeled it after that. And then he goes into the teacher's journey. And what I love is that he doesn't just tell success stories. He tells things that worked and things that didn't work in a really easy way to read. And you can see he's, he's using, I believe it's six teachers as his uh, stories to tell. And he talks about master teachers and the role of mentors and what happens on that first day in the classroom. I bet we can all remember back to that first day. And uh, I remember my first year, and it was nothing to brag about. So I wish I had had a Brian Costello when I was starting back then. So he's got lots of great information about coaching and mentoring. And he's going to share these uh, teachers' journeys. And he gives you a way to reflect and interact all the way through the book. So I hope you'll check that out. Thank you, Peggy, for sharing that with us. Next up, we're going to hear from Patty. Patty, take the mic. Hi, everybody. Um, the, the book that I'm choosing for professional development is technically not a professional development book. But for me, it's going to help me in my teaching. And it is called uh, Factfulness. And I don't know if any of you um, have heard what Bill Gates is doing, but I found this book because I follow Bill Gates' blog, and he's always recommending books. And so Bill Gates is giving factfulness 
to every single college graduate in the country. And he has information on how they can sign up to get this book. But this is, um, if you know Hans Rosling, who uh, passed away maybe it was last year, this is his book uh, that goes along with how we are interpreting data about the world. And um, I always loved watching his bubble charts. And I'm very passionate about teaching the global goals. And this is giving me a whole new perspective on statistics regarding how the world is doing. And one of the things I learned right at the beginning when I opened this book was not to talk about developing versus developed countries, but um, the idea that you know that that's not the way we're supposed to be dividing the world anymore. So I, I just think it's uh, fantastic, and I hope to incorporate that into um, every time I talk about the global goals with the kids. Thank you. That's a very interesting backstory with that book too. Something new to add to our list. All right, Tony, you are up next. Thank you. I um I have done a book study through our educational assistance meetings this year in PD. So this is one I'm very excited about. It's called The Boy Who Was Raised as a Dog by Dr. Bruce D. Perry. Um, he's an expert in um, helping children with trauma, and he pulled together through um, through his experiences. He's pulled together the what's called the um, neurosequential model of therapeutics, um, and it's being used widely now throughout the U.S. Um, and I believe internationally as well. He, he's done this book it's, um, in a very readable fashion, um, and he takes case studies of actual uh, clients of his children, um, and what they, and his tagline is, what traumatized children can teach us about loss, love, and healing. And this, this is a book that, that helped us as educational assistants to understand some of our students more clearly, um, those that are maybe um, you know um, defiant or who who've come from very very difficult backgrounds, but who still want to learn. And so it, it talks about the brain and and some of the things that we have to do. Our first steps into taking care of the emotional needs of our of our students. So that then they are freed up to be able to learn and to change their lives, and it's it's actually an uplifting look. Um, he's very realistic about what happens to children who have undergone um, um, neglect, all the way to sexual abuse. You know, there's just a gamut of things, and so I I really recommend that book. It's it's one that we as um, as educational assistants read, and it's going to be read by our entire school staff this next year. So I thought I'd recommend that one. Thank you so much, Tony, for sharing that with us. It is amazing when we think of um, what some of our students have in their background, um, the things they've gone through, the things they deal with on a daily basis. And so when they act out in the classroom, it's not surprising sometimes. All right, before we move on, is there anyone else who would like to take the mic and respond to this question? Okay, give you another couple of seconds, and if not, we will move on. Uh, Sarah, we're sorry you have to go. Thanks for joining us. All right, well, I guess we will move on to the next question. Okay, bucket list question number two. What conferences, either live or virtual, would you like to attend this summer and why? Okay, I know we've got a big one called ISTE coming up in the, um, the end of the month, but there are other ones around the country that people go to, especially uh, in their local regions that we'd love you to share with us and tell us, you know, what are you doing um, 
as far as getting your PD on this summer? Are you attending something in person or have you found something that's going to be happening virtual and online? So are you ready to raise your hand and take this on? Thank you. Okay, first up we have Susan. And if you don't know Susan, Susan is, uh, I always think of Susan and Thing Link together. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. Just push the talk button. Got it. Hello? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, Susan, we're hearing you just great. Go ahead. Click on talk again. Okay, now can you hear me? Yes, that's perfect. I'm sorry, okay. So this is Susan Oxnavad, and yes, I am from Singlink. Um, and I'm attending ISTE because it's in Chicago. That's where I live. And I'm hoping to meet other people. I saw some people in your um, the questions list who were interested in AR and VR. And I'll be doing that. But also, um, I'm hosting online professional development called the Thinglink Teacher Challenge. So if you're looking for some online PD that's lots of fun, I hope you will join me. Um, Peggy George is taking the Thing Link Teacher Challenge again, and so I know it's on her bucket list, and I hope maybe you'll put it on yours. Susan, can you tell us a little bit more about that, please? So, yeah, so the Teacher Challenge is um, it's professional development. It's online. It's free. You do need a thing like account to participate, but other than that, it's free. And it's flexible. So it's designed for teachers to learn during their busy summers because, you know, that's the best time to learn. And so I've designed it. This is the fifth year I'm doing this. Oh, thank you for pulling it up. Yeah, and if you refresh your page, I just made that prettier for you guys this morning. So, well, it should be prettier the next time you guys pop up here. But um, you can, oh, there, see, here it goes. All right. So you can sign up and you can join at any time. We launched it last Monday, and about um, 90 people have gone through so far, but we have 1,100 people who are signing up. So it's really nice. You can do it online. You start here and you register. Now, I think the most exciting thing about the Teacher Challenge is, you know, the introductory activity that everybody can try today. It's kind of just like try before you commit. And we designed our digital self. It's a 10-minute activity with the app. You don't need any account. It's all free. So I hope people in this session will try that digital self activity and then hopefully sign up for the teacher challenge. So we'll be doing one activity a week for seven weeks. Um, there's a schedule and everybody just proceeds at their own pace. There's a badge. There's so much collaboration. And the key to this is that it features the work of all of the certified educators who started with the teacher challenge earlier, learned and loved ThingLink. So I'm featuring their work. They're teaching, they're showing you how to connect it to your classroom. And it's just um, going to be an amazing experience. We're really excited. Okay, so here's the digital participant map. And this was, that was the first activity where you actually create this little introduction. We could show Peggy's maybe even. And then um, over there in Arizona, I saw it. And then um, you, you create a thing link, and then you put yourself on the map. And you can see here's, here how, here's how it's going. Now, the map updates automatically, believe it or not, when you fill out the form, but it's slow. I don't know how slow it is, but it's quite slow. But you'll eventually show up there, just like Peggy did. I'm on the map, too. Okay, so that's Joyce. She's very near you. So this is a good way to meet people. It's a global uh, a global learning opportunity, and we have um, a large group in Italy, as you can see. So they're going to be translating all the materials and doing this in Italian. So I think this is a really great opportunity for professional development, you know, with all the input and the expertise of the talented people who love to use ThingLink. So I hope you will join us. Sounds like an amazing opportunity. Thank you so much, Susan, for sharing that with us. I know Peggy's Thank you. Speak. And I am on Twitter tweeting. Okay, great. All right, next up for this question is Peggy George. Hello. 
<laughs> I was busy typing here and, and screen sharing, but I am excited about what I get to do this summer. I'm always sad at this time of year because I don't get to go to ISTE in person because I've gone to it for like 10 years. Um, starting back like in 2005, but this year and in the last couple of years, I've been participating in the Not at ISTE challenge, and I shouldn't even say challenge, the whole Not at ISTE community, and I um, am one of the people who helps to create a live binder for everything that's going on at ISTE, and one of the great things is there's this awesome group called Pass the Scope EDU, and they are, a number of them are live at ISTE, and they go around to sessions videotaping and periscoping things that we would never get to see. In fact, I honestly get to see more because of these great periscopes than I actually got to see while I was at ISTE. So the Live Binder has links for all of that, and I want you to check out that Live Binder for um, the the um, not a DISTE community, and it's just starting to fill up. So start with the Getting Started page, and then every day from now through ISTE, we'll be adding new links of things that people are sharing out on the ISTE hashtag and the not at ISTE hashtag. We even have our own not at ISTE Ignite sessions that will be live streamed sessions that we will capture the video and and put it in the live binder. So it is going to be a great way for everyone to get some awesome PD this summer, even if you can't attend ISTE live. Whoops, I got caught doing the same thing. Okay, so, um, okay, Susan went, Peggy went. I'm going to go ahead and share what I'm doing. Oh, wait, no, I'm not. I'm going to go, let Lori go ahead of me. Lori, go ahead and take the mic and talk to us about conferences. Thanks, Paula. I found out a week or so ago that the Arkansas Teachers Association is going to be doing um, reading activities, um, not just for elementary students, but for all teachers. So they have a new reading initiative, and their training is online. Uh, most of what I've seen, I've had to go to Little, Little Rock in order to take the, the PD, but this training is, is online. It's, both in July and in August, so I'm curious as to what it's going to be. So are you going to have, uh, did I understand you're going to it in person or is it virtual? I, I kind of it is virtual. Uh, this, the reading sessions are virtual sessions. They're not they're not in-person sessions. Well, that's great. That's a, a thing I think a lot more states are going to. They're realizing that um, they need to have, that you know, their educators need access at their own time frame, and um, it helps differentiate it also because maybe it's on a topic you don't really need. Thank you, Lori, for sharing that. Okay, um, Kim, you're next to tell, tell us about what you're doing this summer as far as conferencing is going. Well, um, I was lucky enough to participate or present at a conference at Eastern Arizona College. It's always fun to go down there. And I not only present, and I go in and participate in some of the sessions, and they're wonderful. This year, probably going to be my last um, ISC, I'm guessing, not really sure. So excited, Chicago, what a great town. And my best bud that I'm traveling with is from outside of Chicago, so we're going to go see Hamilton, go see your family, and then come back. And the best part of all is that we got picked um, last minute to be 
volunteer champion, so we will work two four-hour shifts, attend an orientation, and get our registration back. So I encourage anybody going to get that in. I think it opens in April, um, and it's a great way to help cut the cost for it. Um, I'm going to say something positive about Arizona education. Um, it doesn't happen very often, but our um, state government went ahead and paid for Google Summit to come here. They did a series of one-day summits, which were wonderful. It was, an, it was smaller. Um, I think it was over three days, so you could either go to all three days at three different schools or attend the one, and I love the team that puts it together. Um, for years, I've gone to Camp Plug and Play in Tucson. Um, yes, yes, Wes, it was an EdTech team, um, not in Arizona, because they were from I don't remember. I know they were from all over. Kim Randall was one, and I know we talk, we're going to be talking about her book. She was one of them. Um, all just wonderful, wonderful people. Um, in Arizona, we have the Arizona K-12 Center, the Kathy, Pop, or Kathy Webke heads, and she has taken this and just done wonderful things with it. And for about, I think it, this week was um, 13. The 13th can't plug and play. You go to a beautiful four-star hotel in Tucson. Um, you start Monday at noon, and you end Friday at noon, and you pick a strand, and you spend just about four days learning. I did infographics. I usually pick something that is challenging, um, and this was challenging, and so I can understand the frustration of my students sometimes. And so for four days, worked on infographics learning, but then they also bring in wonderful keynotes. We've had... Um, Oh, Kitty um, Bell, I'm trying to mess up her first name, and we've had Dean um, Sierinski, and I'm saying that wrong as well, um, uh, Casey Bell, thank you, as well as Tony Vincent, and if anybody knows Tony Vincent, he is just absolutely hot notch. So that's my summer. I figured out with a week of taking a coding class, I've got one week off this summer, so it's the summer of learning. Sounds like you're going to be very busy, Kim, and I know I'm sad to hear that this will be your last ISTE and that we won't get to see each other there, um, but we'll look forward to seeing you online. All right, I am going to, instead of going to ISTE this summer, I am going to get your teach on, which is being held, or national conference is being held in San Diego, California. It's at the same time as ISTE. So that's why I had to make the decision as to whether to go to ISTE or not. Um, Get Your Teach On is run by uh, Hope and Wade King, who are teachers at the Ron Clark Academy in Atlanta, Georgia. It is specifically for K-5 to teachers. And since I teach fourth grade, it fits right in with what I'm doing. So I just figured that I would get a lot more out of it. I love going to ISTE to see all of my online friends, but there's so much that goes on at ISTE that I cannot do in my school that I have a hard time sometimes finding sessions to go to. And what I'm really excited about with Get Your Teach On is that Todd Nesloni is going to be there as one of their speakers. Dave Burgess, Teach Like a Pirate Guy, will be there, plus some other awesome educators. Dina Jump, who is the number one um, money maker on teachers, paid teachers will be speaking, etc. So we're going to get a lot of neat stuff. It's a it's a rah rah rah, sis boom ba kind of conference. You get up and sing songs, and it's like attending camp, from what I understand. So I'm really looking forward to that. All right, does anybody else want to talk about a conference for the summer? Peggy, you want to talk about the Hive one? Sure, I'll do that, short and sweet. The Hive Summit is a new adventure coming up. And um, let me see if I can, can find it to share with you. Um, it is one, it would really help for you to see this, um, one new session every day. And um, here it is. I'm going to bring this up because I want you to see this. Um, 
these are the presenter bees, and it kind of follows the model of the the Ditch Summit um, conference. And the pre I'll, I'll get you right up so you get the real hive feeling here. Uh, and there's a video on this page. This is in the live binder. Catch the buzz, and it goes for. Um, 14 days, it's all free, but the videos only stay up for that week, so you have to catch them that week because then they go away. So be sure to sign up so you get notified. But you'll see some very familiar people here. Um, there's Matt Miller from Digit Textbook, um, Dave Burgess, of course. Uh, uh, who does so many things with Teach Like a Pirate all of that. Uh, Rick Romelli, we have Michael Matera, Tara Martin, who did an awesome presentation for us on gratitude snaps and book snaps. Uh, Sarah Thomas, many of you know her from EduMatch, and the Tech Rabbi is presenting. Uh, 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 Joe Sanfilippo is presenting, and Carrie Bauckham. So that's just to whet your appetite. So sign up, check it out. That's going to be great. I am looking forward to the Hive Summit. I have signed up and can't wait. It is going on at the same time as my beginning of school, but that's all right. And then the other one that I wanted to mention was we had Kim Strobel, was that last week or two weeks ago? I don't know, time's flying by. Um, so I am attending her uh, Strobel Summit, which is three and six days long, starting on July 11th, um, about happiness uh, as a teacher, getting your happiness on. And I loved her webinar, um, doing a gratitude notebook is, um, helping to retrain my brain to have better positive thoughts. So I'm looking forward to that. All right. I don't see any new hands up, so we're moving on. Here we go. Okay. And Peggy, we've arrived at our first raffle drawing. So, oh, there's Brian. He finally got in. Yay, Brian. Okay. Tony just raised your hand. Yes. Oh, wait, everybody's raising their hand to get in on the prize drawing. Here we go. Okay, make sure you put your hands up, folks. And let's see what we've got going on here. Okay, this is for a $25 Amazon gift card that was uh, graciously donated by Patty Ruffing. So if you took the mic and you'd like the chance at winning this prize, Please raise your hand and we'll do a, um, I guess Peggy's going to do a, some kind of a raffle prize picker. That's it. We only have two. Yes, people. Paula, I want to say something here. Since we're just getting going with the sharing and everyone hasn't had a chance to share yet, yeah, let's make reason. this first drawing for every single person in the room. If you want to have an Amazon gift card, raise your hand now. And then I'll do the randomizer drawing for all of the hands that are raised. And you can see that there are numbers coming up as you raise your hand. Everyone is eligible for this one. So raise your hand if you would like to win an Amazon gift card for $25. Keep your hands coming up, and then as soon as you're finished, don't take them down because I'm going to do the drawing with all of the numbers that are showing up. Get your hands up right now. Okay, last call going once. Nobody else is going to raise their hand. Going twice. All right, Peggy, it looks like we are based on the number five. Is that no six? Six. Six. Yep. And I am clicking on it now. And the winner is number five. So congratulations. Let's see. Finally, congratulations. <clears throat> So if you're a winner for any of these prizes today, will you please share your email in um, the chat? And I will remove those before I post that chat online, but that will give us a way to get in touch with you to send you your prize. All right. Thank you. It's so exciting. I 
she'll just hit the watch and people win prizes. That's fun. All right, moving on. Our next question, question three on our bucket list, is what new tech toy or tool would you like to add to your tech bag this summer? Which tool or toy are you looking forward to exploring this summer? Remember to uh, click on the hand, which is under the participants window, to get your turn at taking the mic. And I'm going to turn it over first to Tony. Tony, take it away. Thank you, Paula. I have something that I really enjoyed um, doing this, that I really want to explore even more. And it's, it's a website called Tap Into Teen Mind. And this is um, a website created by Kyle Pierce um, out of uh, the Toronto area in, Can in Ontario, Canada. And he has um, been a teacher for many years in the, in the middle school math. Um, he's got what's called three act math tasks, and he takes um, 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 he makes math very visual and concrete. And so often, I I found working with some students is that that they they're not only lacking basic like multiplication skills, division skills. They they just they don't get it. All these little numbers on the paper. And so what, what Kyle has done is insisted that we do visual things with our students, even our older students, like our grade sevens and eights, right? Um, he, he, for example, he'll take, um, you know, how many steps to walk from the school building to the school door to the flagpole, and let's put it on charts and, and, and just really analyze it, take pictures of it, have the kids. Um, put pictures on their iPads. Um, those are the kind of things that I want to explore this summer um, because they've, um, that's my assignment is to, to work in the middle school. But I find that so many of our students are like two or three grade levels below and they're kind of disengaging. So I found that Carl Pierce has found a way to make math enjoyable. Um, and one of the apps that Two of the apps that um, he's recommended um, are called, um, let me just get to it here, um, Algebra Touch and Long Division Touch. And those are two apps that are described on his website that I've used with some students and it's just very, it, it's just wonderful to be able to create excitement in the lives of our children on, for, in, concerning math. Because so many of them just turn a blind eye and say, I don't have a math brain. But uh, so anyway, that's the one I want to explore this, this summer. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. That's a great one. I'm going back to teaching math this year. So I'll be checking that out. Kim T, you are up. I'm going to be very brief. I just mentioned I wanted to learn more about AR and VR, and I didn't have any resources, so Peggy, being Peggy, went ahead and added a resource, um, and I'm betting she's probably going to throw that into the chat. Um, we're changing things up where I teach, and um, I thought we were going with um, Steam and Makerspaces, but I found out this week, hello, um, it is now going to be with a focus on photography and things like that. Um, so I thought I have a 360 camera. And I'm just starting to explore it. I asked for a couple more. Let's see if that happens. And some cameras. And so um, with AR and VR, that is going to be my focus at ISTE. And I'm going back and reading Monica Burns' book about that as well. So um, wish me luck. Well, we, got, we are wishing you lots of luck. OK, up next we have Wes Fryer. Take it away, Wes. Well, good morning, everybody from uh, Dallas, Texas. I am looking forward to learning more about uh, some physical computing stuff. Um, my wife, Shelly, is going to be teaching a coding workshop um, in July. And there's a robot called the Thymio robot that is uh, by a group called Techie Kids. And I got to meet their founder, uh, Sharon Marzok, this past April at a conference in Washington, D.C. And one of the things that I've just been really 
wanting to find time to play with is, you know, ro robots that can connect to Scratch and being able to have students see the physical, you know, results of their coding, uh, not just on the screen with things that animate and move, but with things that physically move and change in the real world. And so I think the best philosophy of that is constructionism, which is a Seymour Papert thing. So anyway, uh, if anybody else has suggestions for that, we, we have some bench robots at our school, um, but the Thymio is one that um, Sharon has spent a lot of time writing the curriculum for, and so Shelley, as well as myself, don't, don't really want to, um, you know, just invent all of the lessons. We want to have something that we can kind of take off the shelf, but then, you know, put in the hands of kids and especially turbocharge their, their scratch and their coding power. So I put that link into the show notes and it's by Techie Kids. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Wes. Um, as I mentioned earlier, very, very quickly, I'm going back to math. So uh, two of the things I'm looking into right now are Prodigy math, and I just forgot the other one. I'm dropping the link into the chat. Hold on. Ah, oh, and Zern. Um, I went uh, at the conference I was just at. I got to talk to one of the Zern representatives and talked about how it's um, totally um, interwoven with Eureka Math, which is our math curriculum. So excited about learning about all of that. I was talking away and forgot to click on this. Can you believe that? I did it again. Okay, so I was talking that I'm going to be learning Zern and Prodigy. And question number four, what new website app extension would you like to spend some of your time this summer exploring? Raise your hand and talk to us about that. All right, Tammy, the mic is yours. There you go. And that gets off some of them that are actually listed on here, too. Okay, so um, I've got about four of them, so I'll just kind of put them all in together. One thing I want to explore, I've already downloaded it, but I haven't had a chance to start working with it yet, is something called Giphy Capture. I got it from the App Store. And I had already noticed sometimes whenever I looked at some software uh, text-based tutorials on the Internet that sometimes the steps have little animated looping GIFs, and I thought, oh, that is so cool. How do I do that? So I researched it, and I found out that this is one of several tools you can get, and this one was highly rated. So it's called Giphy Capture, and it's basically a screen capture, um, and it, it makes a little animated GIF. You can loop, have it loop or not loop. So it could be great if you just need to really quickly, you know, show here. Here's where it is. Click this. So when you make tutorials, it could be useful. Um, also, for social kinds of sharing, too, I mean, you can use that as well. So if there's something that's on your screen, you go, oh, I want that as a little animated GIF. Uh, you know, you could share it on social sites. Another one that I'm going to do is Adobe After Effects and Adobe Spark, and that's tied into a free two-week course starting in a couple of days called Explanimations, and it's at the Adobe Educator Exchange, and I'll get a link for it. You can sign up. Um, copy, and I hope that you do, because I would love to have some of the people that I see here uh, see them see them in the course as well. That'd be fun. So it's just two weeks, good time of the year. Um, and Adobe After Effects lets, lets you make all kinds of different things. It's used for making special effects in movies, as well as making animations and motion graphics. Um, educators can get all the entire Adobe suite for just about $30 per month. So you don't have to you pay the full price that everybody else does. We get a nice little price break. And it's got so many tools that's really worthwhile. Um, so you'll learn how to use the uh, After Effects. Tied in with that one, because it's also an Adobe product, is Character Animator. It can actually standalone, but it was designed originally to work with After Effects. And uh, they provide puppets, but you can also make puppets or buy puppets. Um, and these are little characters that um, it will, tr in the software, it'll track what you do on your webcam and make your character actually match it. So if you blink, your character blinks. If you talk, um, it actually analyzes live time as you're speaking 
as you're speaking what the mouse shape should be and it matches it on your character and you can record it and put it in and, and animations. Um, you, you tip your head, it'll tip your head. Um, it all just depends on how the character is made. You can actually have it to where you click a button and it'll wave. So it just depends on how, how that character is made as to what capabilities it's going to have. So that one is one I'm excited about. And then uh, the last one is I finally have a computer powerful enough to do it. I'm going to start exploring all the 3D stuff I've been wanting to do for a decade. Um, so now I get to explore VR and AR and making 3D models and rigging them and animating them um, and then pulling them into the Unity game engine and making really cool 3D game-like things. So, um, so that's another thing that I'm wanting to look at. As far as the tools involved with that one, Adobe has several different AR and VR stuff now, all of a sudden brand new. Um, also Blender for making uh, making, rigging, and animating 3D characters in the Unity game engine. Um, that one is now starting to get to where it can actually play on the web. That's a fairly new in the last year or so, getting it to where it's a web type of thing as opposed to like a game console or, um, you know, we've downloaded a big huge file. It's starting to get to where you can actually just log in and do it. So. That's something I'm really excited to see starting to happen in the 3D gaming environment. We can do it for educational purposes. And that's my spiel. You've got a long list of activities. Well, that sounds like fun. We'll have to keep us, you'll have to keep us posted on how it's going. All right, next up is Kim T from Arizona. All right, Kim, you are a really hard act to follow. I'm writing like a crazed person, even though we have all the links. I'm going to make, I'm just going to go through something I learned about this week at Camp Plug and Play, Emojipedia. Tony Vincent loves emoji, so of course we picked up information on that. So you can go to Emojipedia and actually type in the emoji you want. Um, and there's Emoji Tracker. The, you can see the most popular emojis. Why you need that, I do not know, but I know I'm going to show it to my fifth and sixth grade students. But what's funny, I guess maybe funny, is that when you go to the site, there's a warning about epilepsy attacks because um, it is just constantly going with lights and colors. So that does come with a warning. Um, picture collage, it's um, a loop collage. I have seen before and just pulled it back up and think it's really kind of cool. Once again, since we're going to be going with photography, I'm kind of excited about it. You put pictures in there and you can put them into shapes and then you can float over the picture and it will pop up. Thanks for putting those links in. Doing infographics, whereas they're very good digital, but I wanted to create them and almost use them as classroom posters and cash cards. So I was concerned about printing them, and Jill Felty, who is an awesome facilitator, said so they found block posters from Richard Burns, and you can print using that website. My last quick one, and I'm betting many of you already know about this, is YouTube Audio Library. Um, again, with us doing more photography, hopefully video this, this next year, I want to have resources that the students can legally use. So I'm excited about that one as well. All right, we're going to pass it off to Wes now, I guess. All right, uh, two things. One of these is very wishful, and then the other one we're definitely doing. Uh, yesterday I had a chance to be down in Austin at the Learn Fest, which is Carl Hooker's new version of iPad Palooza. And during the closing sessions, uh, Mark Simons, I just dropped into the chat, shared this really awesome iOS app called Novel Effect. And it provides sound effects and sometimes music that accompany you as you read a children's picture book. So the app is actually listening to your voice and then it stays synchronized knowing what page you've turned and what you've read. And like the example video they showed was, was a monster one, so you're hearing, you know, monsters roar and things like that. So what a cool way to have a blended literacy experience with your children or grandchildren and then, you know, share that with teachers uh, coming back and think about using that uh, with students. So I'm excited to hopefully give that a try. And then the other one is the real wishful thinking because I don't know if we're going to pull off this uh, financially, but we really wanted to do some VR uh, because mainly our uh, now 
rising ninth grade daughter is so into art. And there's this absolutely incredible app that Google has for VR called Tilt Brush. And Tilt Brush lets you draw in three dimensions. And it just, you just watch the video if you haven't seen it on the website, and it will just blow your mind. Yes, Tilt Brush. Um, I just dropped the link in at tiltbrush.com. And so it works with different VR rigs, which are pretty expensive. Um, you have to buy the VR rig, and then you have to have the computer to drive it too. And so anyway, the HTC Vive, I think, is the one that we've looked at. So I don't know if we'll pull all the finances together with all the other priorities that we have, but thinking about you know kids and drawing, and if you've seen Ready Player One, uh, you know, just thinking about VR and where we're headed with all this, it is absolutely a mind-blowing thing. So yes, if you know anybody who has an HTC Vive rig and, and is already set up with that, the Tilt Brush app is, is really, relatively speaking, not that expensive to get. But anyway, we'll see uh, if we get to play with that. And, and if you all have had experiences or have experiences you know, playing with Tilt Brush, I think you know, this is just a total window into the future about creating in virtual reality, not just experiencing, you know, something that another person has made, but, you know, students and, uh, and we as teachers and, and human beings being able to create in VR is just pretty exciting. And Tilt Brush, it looks like one of the most exciting ways to do that today. Thank you so much, Wes. Peggy, you're up next. Thank you, Wes. Well, I have a couple of things. I was going to share the uh, Thing Link Summer Challenge, and I am so glad that Susan was here to share that with us. So um, I'm not going to say anything more about that. She did such a great job of covering that. But I want to show you just a couple of things that I have just recently learned about. I don't know if you've heard of WikiWand, but it's Wikipedia Modernized. And it has a um, an extension for Chrome and also for the iPhone. And it is a great way to sort of improve the layout and the the appeal of a Wikipedia Wikipedia page for students. And I learned about that in this awesome presentation for, for um, Google extensions. And so I included that link in the live binder because she has so many more. But this is an example of what a page looks like on Wikiwan. See, it's just much more appealing uh, for and easy to read for going to Wikipedia pages. And that will come up when you're in Wikiwan, whenever you go to a Wikipedia page. The other thing I wanted to share with you is Digital Promise Research Map. Just learned about that this week. All of their resources are free. And they have incredible resources for doing research research, both for students and even teachers. And they have a, a network view that allows you, there's a great tutorial right here on the page. So I'm going to let you explore that. But there was also, this is where I learned about it, on an EdWeb webinar um, this Wednesday. And it was all about using research to improve education. And you can actually, that link is in the live binder, and you can actually go watch the entire webinar. And you'll hear four different teachers all explain how you can use um, Digital Promise and the research map with your students. Thank you, Peggy, for sharing that. Yes, edweb.net has some awesome things. All right, I know we're over our time a little bit, but that's okay. Somehow I've lost the thing to advance slides. I don't have it anymore. I got knocked off at one point. Peggy, can you advance us? Okay, raffle number two. Oh, my goodness, look at this. Um, <clears throat> this is my book that I co-authored with Billy Krakauer and Jerry Blumengarten on connecting the students with the world and I will autograph it and get it out to the mail in the mail to you. So you will need to add your um, virtual I mean your uh, actual address in the chat if you are the winner. So everyone, Peggy, we want to just go ahead and do everyone again that wants that is interested in getting this book. 
Yes, let's do. Okay, anybody who is interested in getting this book, whether you took the mic or not, please raise your hand at this time so that we can do the raffle. Going once, going twice, and it looks like we're based on five people, Peggy. And I got bumped out again. And the winner is... Actually, I didn't lower my hand, and I apologize. I'm going to do this again because I already have that book, and the winner was number one. So now that my hand is down, the winner is number one, Tony Plard. Congratulations. Awesome, Tony. So if you would not mind, um, you can email it to me if you're not comfortable putting it in the uh, uh, chat at um, gmail.com, your address, and who you would like it signed, autographed to, and I will take care of getting that in the mail to you. Thank you so much. Oh, there, got my permissions back. Okay, I can advance slide. Okay, our last, not our last, but one of our last questions is, what fun places do you plan to visit this summer? This one's just, we've learned a lot of information <laughs> today. But what are some of your travel plans that you're looking forward to this summer? Please raise your hand and tell us what you, where you're going. All right, Wes, you're up, followed by Tony. We're uh, headed to Seattle here in a couple weeks, or actually, gosh, it's next week. Um, and we're going to have a family reunion up there. If anybody has connections in a Seattle area school, we were trying, I was trying to get a workshop together, um, but we haven't been able to put those pieces together. So anyway, it just may be all fun and no work, which would probably be a good thing. But my girls have never been up there, and we're excited to see the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Hi. I'll just go ahead. I know we're short on time. We have a big road trip planned to see all of our grandchildren, which takes us from Provo, Utah, uh, down to see the new baby being born down in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. So we might, I might be able to hook up with you, Peggy, and say hi. And uh, then we'll travel over to California, see the Redwoods. I've never seen them. Um, and my daughter and, and son-in-law and her two kids live in Redding, California, then into Washington State, because my mom is in Tacoma, and then I've got two brothers in Washington State as well. So it would be a fun little road trip. It's, it's always fun when you can um, combine a road trip and seeing your family. All right, Peggy George, you're up. We skipped over number four, but I just want to do a quick share of this one because it was uh, what hobby uh, do you plan to work on this summer? And I plan to really tackle um, scanning old photos to digitize them. And I'm using this amazing tool that I put in the live binder. It's called PhotoMine. And it, it's an app for uh, iPhone and um, iPad. And it will actually scan entire pages so you don't in an album. So you don't have to take them out of the album to scan them. And then it will separate them out like you see in this picture here. So that um, you can edit each individual picture and improve upon them, but it captures them that way. So I'm going to be doing that this summer and really trying to get my photos digitized. And that's awesome, Peggy. We did not skip over. It's coming up next, but that's okay. You're ahead of the game, and that's a good place to be. So anybody else sharing summer plans? If not, we will move on. And we are ready for another raffle prize. I know that you love, you love sharing. So again, we need your hands up if you would like to a chance at winning an Amazon gift card in value of $25 that was so graciously donated by Kim Tom Thomas. 
So raise your hand, folks. Okay, last call. Anyone else standing in the raffle? All right, it looks like our magic number is seven. Oops, now we went down. It was, it was, it was Dr. Thomas Ho. Uh, I, I spotted it before hand started going down. Okay, thank you. So, Dr. Thomas, thank you. congratulations on your prize win. All right, and question number six. This is our last question of the day. What hobbies will you pursue during this summer? What is it that uh, you're passionate about besides technology? We are all passionate about that. But what other things are you going to be doing this summer to while your time away? All right, Eileen, you're up. Don't forget to press the talk button, Eileen. Eileen, we're not hearing you. Um, not sure what the problem is. Um, did you press the talk button on right below the uh, audio video window? It, I've seen that pattern before. If it just flashes for a brief second, um, if if you Eileen, if you do a audio setup wizard, it might actually fix it for you. It's not able to find it, and that's why we're seeing it flash for just a second. Okay. Well, Eileen works on that. Um, my summer plans, other than going to San Diego for the conference, would be just to take a few days and go over to um, Destin, Florida, spend some time on the beach. It's a beautiful area. Uh, people spend a lot of money to go to the Caribbean islands. And we have that within about a five-hour drive of New Orleans. The water is absolutely gorgeous. The, the beaches are beautiful. It's a great place to get away to. Okay. Well, Eileen, still, Eileen, we'll come back to you if you get um, it worked out. But I know we have a couple of things we need to wrap up here. Um, so. Hold on. Okay, number four in our prizes is a premium Flipgrid subscription for one year donated by Susie Higley. Um, and it can be used international, internationally, sorry. So even our international participants will be able to take part in this raffle with no problems at all. So please raise your hand to be in the drawing for a one year premium Flipgrid subscription. Any other takers? Laura in Italy, are you interested? This is such an awesome prize because to have a premium for an entire year with Flipgrid is fantastic. And I think we may even have one more available. Um, so if you don't get this one, maybe you'll get the next one. But thank you so much, Susie, for donating this. Okay, it looks like our number for this is four. Maybe. The winner is number two, Eileen. This is your lucky day. <laughs> Congratulations. Everyone, be sure to leave your email addresses in the chat for me, because otherwise I won't be able to reach you to send you the certificates for your prizes. All right. Our raffle prize drawing number five is a LiveBinder basic subscription for one year. This was donated to us by LiveBinders. It is an individual teacher subscription, and it can be used internationally. Please raise your hand if you would like a chance to win this prize, a <clears throat> basic subscription for a year from LiveBinders. Awesome. As you know, Peggy is one of the LiveBinder queens. She puts together one of these every week for our shows, and it's an awesome way to get lots of resources 
curated into one nice place. Yes, Live Binders is a fabulous tool, and you all know that because we do use them every week. So I am so grateful to uh, the Live Binders developers, Barbara and Tina, for donating two subscriptions for us. And one is this free basic subscription, which is really their premium. Um, and you can, when you get that certificate, you have a certain amount of time to activate it. Like she gives you plenty of time. You can actually wait to activate it till closer to the school, the start of the school year. And it's good for a year from the time you activate it. The uh, next Live Binder prize is actually, actually a class group. Um, license, which allows you to use that license for every teacher in your school. And all they have to do is create their accounts, and they all have premium access for one year. So that's the next prize. I think it's number six. But this one is for the individual prize. All right. Anybody else want to raise their hand for a chance at this? Live Minder yearly one year subscription. Okay, we're on three. Any other takers? Going once, going twice, and our international people are not raising their hand. I wish they would, but they didn't. All right, Peggy, it looks like we're based on three. Congratulations. The winner is number two, Thomas Ho. Congratulations. Awesome. Don't forget, I think uh, we need your email address so that we can get these off to you. Very nice. Yay. We need a, we need a virtual applause machine. All right. Prize number six is another $25 Amazon gift card. This one was donated by the wonderful Kitty George. So please, everyone in the room, raise your hand, take a shot at getting a $25 Amazon gift card. There are so many wonderful things to buy on Amazon. I spend lots of time there and lots of money. <laughs> OK, Peggy, it looks like our magic number this time is five. Six, six, sorry, Lori was at the top, almost missed her. And the winner is number six. Congratulations. Yay, Lori. Woo, glad Woo number four. Okay, congratulations. I think now you might know how to get in touch with you. <laughs> All right, and? Prize number seven is a premium Flipgrid subscription for one year. Again, it can be, uh, this one was actually donated by Flipgrid, and this also can be used internationally. So anybody who's interested in this, please make sure that you raise your hand nice and high so that we get everybody um, in the drawing. This is a great prize for college teachers, too, because you can use it with any group that you create. It isn't just a, like an elementary school or a high school. So being able to collaborate with all these people on the, on the creation of, uh, oh, I'm talking about that. I'm jumping ahead again. I'm talking about the Live Binder one. This is the premium Flipgrid prize number two. Sorry. That's OK, Peggy. We, we appreciate your enthusiasm. OK, this drawing looks like we're based on four. So who is our lucky winner? <laughs> Not losing your mind. And the winner is number four, Wes Fryer. Awesome. Congratulations. Awesome job. All right. and. For our raffle drawing, number eight is the big one that Peggy was talking about for the team or organization upgrade. It is an awesome, awesome 
donation by live binders. And this again can be used internationally. And we would love to see one of our international people raise their hand and get try to get a prize. <laughs> All right, it looks like we have oh wait, we went from four to three. Uh, now we're back up to four. Anybody else want to raise their hand for a chance at this year subscription for LiveBinder? All right, Peggy, it looks like our magic number is four. And the winner is number two, Patty Ruffing. Congratulations, Patty. Awesome, Patty. That's great news for you. Virtual applause. All right, so we are wrapping this up. Um, thank you so much for coming and being part of this. And Peggy will talk about what's going on <coughs> for the next little bit. And then we will see you when we resume after our summer break. Thank you so much, everybody, for participating. Thank you all for joining us today. And I am so happy almost everybody won prizes. So this is great. So we're taking our official break from the ISTE conference all the way through the month of July. And we will be returning on August 4th. So I hope you'll use this summer to go back and look at some of our previous recordings, because that's always a great thing to do. And don't forget about all the things that were shared in this, this session today. So we'll just skip right ahead, Lori, through all of these things and just remind people that you can subscribe to the um, um, shows on either iTunes U or uh, YouTube. And we want to make sure you get your certificate. So uh, fill in the survey, and um, we will. Um, Patty will be sending that to you, so make sure you do that. And I'll put the link in the in the chat again. And thank you all for coming. Special thanks again to Paula Nagel for facilitating and to everybody who participated. Yes. Have a great summer. And we're going to turn the recording off.